Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today, as always, we're going to go over Taylor Swift's shows this past weekend, discuss all of the surprise songs, get into some stuff that Jason Kelsey has said about spending time with Taylor and Travis, um, Brittany Mahomes sharing a little Taylor Swift nugget if you can call it that. A lot of good stuff to get into. Let's start out with recapping, discussing Taylor's shows in Edinburgh over the weekend in Scotland. She is back in the UK. The first chunk of shows in the UK are done and dusted. Three nights in Edinburgh. Um, Let's go over the surprise songs because as always, the surprise songs are the most fun and interesting and just like fun to dissect part of the show because obviously the rest of it, we know there's always some fun little um, moments that can happen in the show elsewhere. But I feel like obviously the surprise songs are where there's just, I don't know, there's some fun stuff that that goes on. And Taylor, she played some songs that I was just like, wow, wow, this is this is fun. This is why being a Taylor Swift fan is so fun. Okay, so look, let's get into night one. So she starts off and she performs would have, could have, should have with some elements of I know places. I just, the mind of Taylor Swift to, first of all, like combine those two songs. I would love her. I would love a documentary or some sort of like, maybe documentary is too much, but I would love some like backstory or insight into how she decides to like mash up songs. Cause I don't think I would have ever put I know places and would have, would have, could have, should have together, but it just works so well. It's so unique. It's so interesting. And again, I love the mixing of like time and eras. I know places was written and performed, you know, 10 years ago now at, the, at, at this point would have, could have, should have obviously a lot more recent of a song. So I just thought, and that's one of my favorite songs. Actually, both of those songs I love a lot, but would have, would have, could have, should have, it's hard to say. Um, that's like one of my favorite songs off of Midnight's. And I feel like it's maybe slightly underrated, but I really like that song. Then she performs, she brings it out after axing it from the set list. She, <clears throat> she brings back Tis the Damn Season and she plays it with Daylight. Now, Daylight is one of my absolute favorite Taylor Swift songs. I love that song so much. And again, it's like, I would have never put those two songs together. I would have never thought to pair up Tis the damn season with daylight, but she did it. So that night, that is a strong night for surprise songs. And honestly, maybe I should rank each of the nights because she performed three nights in Edinburgh. So maybe I can like rank them based off of um, based off of the surprise song. So then night two, she performs The Bolter, obviously from TTPD with elements of Getaway Car, another great song that I wish was in the set list permanent set list in the repute. I mean, reputation, there's so many great songs, but I do kind of wish she still performed that, that song. And then she did all the girls you've loved before and crazier. Now crazier, the fact that she did that song, which is a song she wrote as a teenager, as just a kid, essentially. Oh my gosh. I, I would have lost my mind at that show. This is the first time she's performed it live during the Eras tour. So like, wow. And Again, the mashup of these two songs was also so funny. And I don't have any proof to show you guys that this is true and real, but you guys know that I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, I've been a Kansas City Chiefs fan for a long time. So I obviously knew about <laughs> Travis Kelsey. I was a fan of Travis Kelsey prior to um, him and Taylor Swift getting together. And I actually said like when all the girls you loved before came out and was put out, I actually texted one of my friends and I was like, I don't know why, but this song kind of reminds me of Travis Kelsey. And again, this was way before Taylor and Travis actually started to date. Now, I don't know if she was performing this because of Travis Kelsey for any reason, but I do think the mashup, you know, it's giving I'm in love vibes. Um, I would have died. I would have died at that show. Just that that combination, impeccable. Okay, and then night three, she does Dorothea, which is actually the surprise song that I got or one of the surprise songs that I got at my show in Kansas City. Night two, same man as Travis Kelsey, with elements of it's nice to have a friend. Now, I am not the biggest it's an it's nice to have a friend fan. So I don't know how I mean I would have 
enjoyed this, but it wouldn't be top of my list. And then she did Haunted, very underrated song, with elements of Exile. Fantastic song. If I had to rank these nights, I think I'd say night two is number one simply for her performance of Crazier. Like the fact that she performed that song puts it at number one for me. Then I think I would have to say night one is is in second and night three is in third. But I would love to know what you guys think. Like which which of the nights would you have wanted to be at if you could only pick one? Um, and maybe this is a game that... W- we can do as we go as we go on throughout the tour, um, kind of saying like which which of the nights we would have wanted to go to. Taylor also during night two, and actually while she was performing, um, would have could have should have, or actually it was night one while she was performing that song. Um, she stopped her performance because she noticed a fan was having a problem, um, and she stopped performing and like asked somebody in the audience to help her, and she actually said. She's right there. I'm just going to keep playing until somebody helps them. I'm going to be singing this song. And she said, just let me know. I can do this all night as she was getting more and more frustrated. And um, finally, someone found found the fan, helped her. But I have to just say, obviously, Taylor, we know what happened um, in South America this year. It was Brazil, right? I'm pretty sure it was in Brazil where um, one of her fans sadly passed away following the concert due to um, dehydration. It was so hot. The um, venue wasn't allowing people to bring in water. It was a disaster. And a fan sadly passed away. And I think we're we're seeing this in like, it was just concerts in general, how especially, especially in these venues where it is a, you know, GA space and everyone is crammed up against each other and it's so hot and it's just tight and people aren't getting water and they're not, they're standing for hours and hours and hours. Like it's not always the safest. It's not always the healthiest thing. And, um, I like that Taylor is like obviously taking care of, of, of her fans and making sure that their safety is the priority. Um, and I just hope that, well, first of all, I hope that if she, I, I think if she sees other stuff happen over the course of the, of the tour, she will stop the show and do something about it. But I also hope that like the venues in general and just like the places that she goes to really make sure to take care of the people that are there because it can get, it can get, it can get dangerous and it, it, it can get kind of scary. And especially as it gets like closer in the, or more and more into the summer and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, I hope that more of these places just like take that into account and make sure that people are doing okay, feeling okay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another piece of news was Jason Kelsey was on Andrew Santino's podcast last week. And he was asked kind of about like Taylor and Tra- well, more specifically Travis, but kind of just like how crazy his life has been as of recently. And um, Jason talked about like how basically Taylor and Travis can't be normal people anymore. Like their lives are just so chaotic. So this is what he said about Taylor and Travis. Kylie and I think we have it bad. Then we go hang out with with one of them for a second. This is a whole other situation here. Like you can't be a normal person at that point, which is sad. Obviously Jason's life has definitely changed because he's Travis Kelsey's brother and like they're getting a lot more fame and attention. I think they also had that just like with Travis and Jason's podcast becoming so successful. Um, We saw that fan confront Kylie Kelsey and how, you know, Kylie handled that. But I think their association with Taylor Swift has made their life a lot more insane as well. But I think there's no denying like Taylor and Travis, again, I mean, Wherever they go, whatever they do, people talk about it and people want to know and people want to just, it's, they're in a fishbowl essentially. And I can't really imagine being like the family member of somebody in that situation because you're sort of affected by it as well, but also you have nothing to really do with the situation. So it's very, it's very unique. Um, but I do hope that like Kylie, Jason, Travis, Taylor, they get to like enjoy and spend time together without the craziness of like paparazzi or fans or people bothering them. I don't know. It just, it kind of made me sad for Taylor and Travis in a lot of ways too, because yeah, like they just, there's no, there's no peace (laughs) to use one one of Taylor Swift songs. Like it's, it's very, um, it's a, it's a challenging life, but I think they're both equipped to handle it. 
And I think it's good that they have each other to go through it. And then just like the last little piece of, it's it's not even news, but it's just something that I saw over the weekend that I was like, oh, that's sweet. So um, Brittany Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes uh, went to the Tim McGraw concert this weekend in Kansas City. And Brittany shared on her Instagram stories a video. So Tim McGraw has a song with Taylor Swift that they did years ago called Highway Don't Care, I think is what the song is called. Anyway, during the concert, there was um, he was performing that song and Taylor, she obviously wasn't there, but like her verse or like her part of the song was being played on the video screen behind Tim and Brittany recorded it and shared it to Instagram. And I just thought, I just feel like Brittany always does these like little things and like nods to show that like she supports Taylor or like loves Taylor. That was an example of that. Her using a Taylor Swift song and like one of her reels. Like, I don't know. I just, I've. I really enjoyed this Britney and Taylor friendship that's developed over the last year or so. And I honestly, it like made me miss their football game wag era content together. And then both like freaking out over touchdowns and doing handshakes and all that stuff. I don't know. That was just like a very fun time. And I'm really looking forward to them being reunited again. And hopefully, I've said this a thousand times, but hopefully we'll see Britney and Patrick at a concert this Summer, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's going to happen pretty soon. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it in the next couple of weeks. Um, some, some Chiefs fans or Chiefs players going to Taylor's concert. So that's that for today's show. Again, let me know what you guys think. Any thoughts, feelings, concerns. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media and we will see you guys next time. Bye.